from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Reed here. Huh? Hey, now listen, George, if Floyd's of England keeps handing me cases, how can I work for the other insurance companies? Well, what I'm calling about this time isn't really a case. So what? As long as the company pays my expense account, and maybe a nice little fee to boot? Uh, fee? Sure. Well, I'm not even certain you'll need an expense account. Oh, then now, wait a minute. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, I think you'd better come over here to my office so that we can talk about this. Well, I don't want to sound chintzy, George, but a cab to your place will cost me over a buck. Oh, well, uh, that can go on the expense account, of course. Good. Then as long as we've established the expense account for this thing, whatever it is, I'll see you in a few minutes. Well, now, there's no hurry, Johnny, so just take your time. Huh? I said take your time about getting here. Yeah? I'll be right over. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the intriguing adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Floyd's of England, North American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the cautious celibate matter. Wait a minute. Over the phone, George Reed did not tell me what he wanted me for. Also, he very plainly said not to hurry. Hmm. Item one, a dollar twenty. No, make it a buck and a half for a taxi down to his office. Go right in, Mr. Dollar. Mr. Reed's expecting you. Okay, thanks. Oh, come in, John. Yeah. As I tried to tell you on the phone, there was no reason to rush over. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got the message, George. That's why I did rush. Oh, well, uh, sit down, sit down. Sure. Well, uh... Cigarette? No, no, thanks. I'll smoke one of my own. Oh, sure. Uh, but here, uh, let me give you a line. Okay. Honey, I filled this thing just this morning. Ah, uh, here, give it to me. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure I can make it work. Well, what is this, George? Some kind of a stall? Oh, here, give me, give me. Uh, well. Ah, that's me. I don't think you were trying. I guess I didn't flick it hard enough. Yeah. Now, what's on your mind? Well, um, you uh, got back from that assignment out in Oklahoma sooner than I expected, from that town with the unlikely name of Bum Spung. Well, it's really the name of Durango Laramie Delhart's ranch. Crazy old character, but I like it. Bum Spung. <laughs> now, what can a name like that possibly mean? Are you kidding? You told me yourself the other day just before I went out there. Oh? Did I? Well, of course you did. It's an old Indian name. Means bum, means bad spring, bad water. Oh, of course. You, uh, cleaned up everything out there? What's the matter with you, George? Didn't you read the report I handed in with my expense account? Well, I sort of glanced over it, but you're coming back so soon, and with Durango's pretty niece out there, Carol Dalhart. Oh, what about Carol? Didn't I, uh, kind of get the impression that Durango would like to have you marry her? <laughs> Well, you should have. Every time I get within spitting distance of Oklahoma, I expect them to shove a shotgun at my back, and... Well, that's why I left there in such a hurry. Oh? Uh -huh. Sure, right after settling that insurance matter. Only it was for Durango's old pal, Sidewinder Wilson. Another character. Yes, Durango was here in Hartford, but uh, Carol was there, wasn't she? <sighs> yeah, she certainly was. And George, I'd love to have stuck around a while, you know, to be with her. Mm -hmm. When I got word that Durango was about to get back there and that he was bringing along a preacher, oh, brother, I took off. Why, Johnny? Why? Well, let's face it, George. I'm afraid I'm a confirmed celibate. Well, at least you say you are. But uh, aren't you rather fond of Carol Dell? Well, I've told you. She's a living doll. She's, she's tall, dark, and, and very beautiful. She's intelligent. She has a lot of spark, a lot of spunk, too, and a wonderful sense of humor. Uh-huh. Yeah, and to put it bluntly, Carol has everything. Everything a man could possibly want. And, George, when I take that gal in my arms... 
Why don't you marry her, Johnny? Confirmed bachelor, eh? But you don't sound like it. No. But sometimes when I think about her, I don't feel like it. Well, then? No, 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 no. Let's stop talking about it. Why? Because, George, I'm not marrying. Not Carol or anyone else. At least, not right now. Someday, perhaps? Not now. Best years of your life, Johnny. And with someone like her. George, I've made up my mind about this whole thing, and that's that. Yes, but I'll bet if she were to walk in here suddenly... I said, cut it out, please. And listen, what difference does it make to you? What business is it of yours? Well, of course, it wouldn't hurt me a bit from the standpoint of client relationship. Huh? And after all, Durango is a mighty good client. You mean to say you've been giving me this, this, this big marriage buildup just... George, so help me, I ought to wring your neck. Oh, well, now, Johnny... But come on, now. You've been stalling around long enough. Stalling? Yes, stalling. Now, what did you want to see me about? Well, actually, it's about Durango. Johnny, he, um... He asked me to have you come here. What for? And to keep you here. What? Yes, until he can arrive. You mean Durango's on his way here? Well, he thought of asking you to fly out to Bum's Bung again, but he was afraid you wouldn't. George, can't you see what this means? Can't you see why he's coming here? And probably with that shotgun I mentioned. Oh, now, Johnny. No, sir, George. When old Durango gets here, you tell him... Hi there, huh? Where is he? Durango. Ain't that Johnny Dollar got here yet? Wait. The fire escape. What did you say? Oh, yes. Uh, well, then I'll go right here. Johnny, wait! Tell him I left town. No, wait. Listen! Well, where is he? Durango. Hi there, Georgie. Where's he at? The window. You, you mean went out the window? Yes. And Johnny! Johnny! You come back here, Johnny! You hear me? I said come back here! And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the cautious celibate matter. Needless to say, when that wild old character, Durango Laramie Gallon, I started shooting at the building, well, I really made time down that fire escape. And I didn't stick around to see how he was going to square himself with the police. Because before I could even reach the nearest corner, a couple of prowl cars pulled up in front of Floyd's of England and out piled half a dozen cops all pulling their guns. No, sir. I grabbed a taxi. That's item two, and it comes to five dollars even for the fastest ride I could get to my apartment. Because Durango's presence in Hartford can mean only one thing. Yes, sir. He was still obsessed with the idea that I should marry his niece, Carol Delhart. Sure, I care a lot for Carol. Maybe even love her, I don't know. And I know that she likes me, likes me a lot. But I also know that neither of us is going to be railroaded into marriage by old Durango. Yet there couldn't be any other reason for his coming here. So I dragged out a couple of handbags and proceeded to pack them. Pack them well. Then item three, another dime for a phone call. George Reed here. So what happened, George? The cops haul him off and throw him into the clink? Durango? Who else? Johnny, this man is unbelievable. It's fantastic. Huh? I don't know how he worked it, how much it cost him. And of course, as always, he came here loaded with money. Thousands, Johnny. Yeah? Well? But the police didn't even take those six guns away from him. Oh, brother, all the more reason why I'm getting out of here. Yes, Durango still thinks he's living in the old days of the wild and woolly West when the only... What? You're leaving? Oh, you bet your life I am, and I'm putting all the costs of transportation on expense account. Oh, well, now listen... After all, it was you who got me into this whole thing. Listen to me. Where are you going? What do you think I tell you? You're in cahoots with this wild old man, this trying to get me to marry his niece. But, Johnny, if you and Carol love each other... So what? Do you think we want him to force us into it? Well, now, look. Suppose we... Yeah? Oh, come on, George. I'm in a hurry. George! Are you in your apartment, Johnny? That's right, but not for any longer than... Why do you ask that? You stay right there, Johnny. Durango. You just stay right there. I'm coming right over. I got to talk to you, young fella, and that ain't all. You hear me, Johnny? Eh? California, here I come. Thanks to the late hour, I was able to get a plane without any trouble. Though I half expected to see Durango come tearing out to the field with those crazy six guns blazing before we took off. Incidentally, I used the name of Bailey when I grabbed my ticket, just in case. Oh, and incidentally, George, item four is 14685, ticket to Los Angeles. It's on my American Express credit card, but believe me, brother, I'm collecting from you. You may have to pay for a lot of travel before I'm through with this thing. This is the pilot speaking. We'll be landing in Chicago in about ten minutes. 
Weather is clear, the moon is bright, and ground temperature is 52 degrees. Is there a Mr. Johnny Dollar on board? A Mr. Johnny Dollar. I don't have him listed among the passengers, but is there a Mr. Johnny Dollar on board? Uh, uh stewardess. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bailey, isn't uh, it? This, uh, b- b- Johnny Dollar you're asking for, a friend of mine, I guess he missed the flight. Yes, I guess he must have. Anything important for him? Well, just a radio message. Well, as I say, I'm a good friend of his, so why don't you let me see that message and perhaps I can... Well, you know. Oh, no, sir, I'm terribly sorry, but that would be against regulation. Well, what if it's anything important? I'm sorry, but thank you just the same. Fasten your seatbelt, please. Yeah, Sure. When we landed in Chicago, I was tempted to grab a telephone, call George Reed, and ask him if Durango had given up the chase. For I knew that by now, George must have realized he'd have to be on my side in this whole silly business. But during the stopover, I didn't even risk leaving the plane. Finally, we took off again, and I managed to sleep for a while. But all I could dream about was Durango chasing me. Through streets and alleys, across the plains, on foot, on horseback, in a car, a boat, a train... And all the time firing those handguns at me. Wild, fantastic dreams. By the time we got to Los Angeles, I was a physical mental wreck. But I knew that for the time being, at least, I was clear of Durango. So, after picking up my bags, I elbowed my way through the crowd to the taxi stand. Excuse me, please. Uh, Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry. Thank you. Taxi! Taxi! Ah. Hey! Hey, Hey, taxi! Here you are, Johnny. I hired this here now fancy limousine for you and me. Huh? Say, you ought to took one of them new jet flights like I did. Durango. Would have got you here a lot quicker. Durango, listen. Well, sir, Johnny, I finally catched up with you, didn't I? Sir Johnny, I finally catched up with you, didn't I? Yeah, I guess you did. Well, you were the slipperiest young maverick I ever did see. Now, hide yourself up in this here now fancy limousine that I hired for you. Okay, Durango, whatever. Huh? Huh? What's the matter? Look, that man. Where? The other side of your car. Hasn't he got a gun there? Well, I have, so I'll soon find out. You wait here, Johnny. Oh, sure. <laughs> I dropped my bags and tore back onto the passenger ramp. By jumping over a fence, I was able to climb on board an airliner that was about to leave. By flashing my credentials at the stewardess, I kept her from throwing me off, and in a couple of minutes, we were in the air. Yes, sir, and headed for Portland, Oregon. The plane fare is item 55620. And to prove I'm not kidding about the company paying my expenses on this wild trip, item 6 is 400 and a quarter for my two leather handbags and all the clothes I'd packed in them. So what happened at Portland? You won't believe it. But Durango was there and waiting for me. Sure, he chartered a plane. And because of the stops that my flight made along the way, he got there first. But I saw him in time. Johnny, here I am. Over here, Johnny. By jumping another fence and doing 100 yards in something like nine seconds flat, I managed to find a taxi stand. Item seven, $35 for a wild ride through the streets of Portland. Because I knew that somewhere in back of us, Durango was in hot pursuit. We finally ended up at a private airstrip out north of town. I'd have made 200 bucks for the plane I chartered. And I told the pilot just to go, go anywhere. But according to regulations, he had to report his course and destination. So I knew that sooner or later, Durango, who's nobody's fool, and more important with all his money, would be on my tail again. I racked my brain trying to figure out some way, trying to think of someone who could possibly... Yeah, someone. And then it occurred to me, there was someone. Sure, of course. The one person in the world who was in the same spot I was. Sure, it could be like walking into a lion's den. But item nine, a total of $114. Plane, bus, train, and rental car. First to Enid, Oklahoma. Then north to the broken down little ranch at Bum Spot. And yep, Carol was there. That lovely, loving Carol. <sighs> Oh, easy, gal, easy. You don't like to be kissed. Oh, I do, I do. Yeah. Well, I love it, honey, and you'd know it. 
But listen, has Durango been here? Oh, Johnny, I don't know where that old goose went. Yeah, well, I do. He went to Hartford. Hartford? Yeah, Hartford, gunning for me. That crazy old man is so set on having us get married, Carol. Well, sure he is. But to go all the way to... Well, now, that's just carrying things too far. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, if he thinks that by waving a six-gun around... Listen, Johnny Dollar, I'm real gone on you. You know that. Well, yeah, and I think you know how I feel about but you. that doesn't mean that just because older Ango wants it that way, we've got to get hitched up together. No. At least... Well, at least not right away, so... If he thinks he can shotgun you and me and... Oh, no. Durango! I know he'd be coming back to you, Carol, so now we really celebrate. Durango, you crazy cow! Now, Durango, you stop that. You put down that gun and listen to me. Well, he's going to marry you, ain't he? Well, ain't he? No, Durango. No? No, at least... Well, not now. And in spite of the way, you've chased me all the way across the country. Yes, Durango. Well, sure, I chased you, but not on account of Carol, Johnny. Huh? Well, sure, sure. I hope all the time that sometime you and her get married up together. Well, but, then? But I... Uh, I give up trying to force you kids doing it. Huh? Well, I just figure when you're ready, well, then you will. But, but going to Hartford and chasing me that way... Huh? Oh, that. Yeah, that. Well, I want nothing, Johnny. It's just that when you was out here last week and you kept my old pal Sidewinder Wilson from getting murdered, uh, you know, Sidewinder's my oldest pal, Johnny, and my best friend. Yeah, that's true, Johnny. And when you passed on the word that he was the one that found out about that killer, well, it was well, Johnny. Well, you know, now he's he's the new chief of police down there at Fairweather. Yeah, well, bully for him, but I still don't see... So you, you being so good to him, I... I just wanted you to know I appreciate it. So, what I went to Hartford for was to give you this. Holy. Some of them's a bit dirty, crumpled up, and got some. To, but when I counted right, there ought to be $10,000. There you are. Gee, Durango. Well, Durango, I. Well, I don't know what to say. Yeah, you, you don't have to say nothing, Johnny. Just enjoy it. But are you sure you wouldn't like me to have the, the preacher come up from Enid and... and uh, no, I guess not. But God bless you anyhow, boy. <laughs> this time I did stay over couple of days. Yeah, and if I ever do take the leap... Uh, the expense account? Well, George, I'll still argue with you about it, but that's all. And the total? $1,053.45. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a string of holdups, and behind them all is... Well, why don't you listen and find out for yourself? Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Gene Tatum, John McIntyre, and G. Stanley Jones. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. See how he runs on suspense is next on the CBS radio network. <laughs>